Morning. How's everyone doing today? A um, lot of interesting things kind of happened yesterday. A um, couple things kind of blew up um, on the uh, side of Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Um, let me just double check the levels here. Cool. All right. So, um, yes, weird, totally weird. Uh, well, not weird, but um, disappointing, I would say, um, in that Alex Stamos at Facebook um, is uh, shifting his roles away. Um, he's no longer going to be the CSO there. He's uh, shifting that um, set of responsibilities and the team over to infrastructure services and such. Um, interesting note in the um, New York Times article that covered it was that uh, his departure set up for August, um, which uh, he had said, you know, he's still working at Facebook, um, still, uh, you know, focusing on election fraud and things like that. Um, but I don't think those are two um, incompatible statements. I think he may end up still leaving in August. Um, that's disappointing. Alex is one of the best in the field. Um, and for him not to be able to have an impact or the influence, the scale that he felt appropriate um, really says something about CISOs in general. Um, and I think that kind of ties to some stuff that I was talking about last year. Um, and I think I'll be talking a lot about more this year. So um, last year and the year before, I talked about security teams and organizational design, whether they were set up for success or for failure. Um, and I think that's really um, interesting in that a lot of people just kind of go blindly about their day in security going like, yeah, you know, I'm working on solving uh, perimeter issues, I'm running an IPS, I'm running a firewall, I'm, you know, doing incident response. Um, but really, that's all firefighting stuff, right? Um, it's not really getting ahead of the curve. And that's really generally the challenge we have in security um, is that we're always fighting fires. We're never actually teaching people fire safety. Um, and I think uh, it's an organizational design problem. You take all the people who are experts in security and you put them in a team on their own away from the business, um, not talking to the business, not helping them develop better solutions, better um, problem or uh, solving problems in a more efficient manner, building security and privacy in from day one. Um, so of course, if they're going to be effective, they're going to have to spend all their time in meetings and not actually do any work, um, which is not the way you want to go. That's not sort of how you want to um, run your team. Um, and then the flip side is, you know, uh, the, or they, they can't communicate, they can't have the political will or influence. So they end up building these strong perimeters because it's the only thing they can control. Um, and that's really what we have. And that's sort of been now codified as best practice. And I think that's a stopgap measure. I think that's the best sort of acquiescent, uh, acquiescence or acquiescing. Jeez. I feel like it's Monday, right? It's Tuesday, unfortunately. Um, it's like, a, uh, you know, you're acquiescing to the, the situation. You're saying, I can't move this mountain. I'm going to just dig my little trench here. I'm going to build my wall. Um, and that's not nearly what we, that's not what we need to be doing in this day and age. And I think um, Alex Stamos's departure from uh, his main role at Facebook, previously from uh, Yahoo. Um, and you may think, oh man, that guy does not very good. No, he's one of the best in the field, which is why he's tackling these major problems. Um, and it's unfortunate that, he, you know, someone as good as him has not have been able to have the impact um, at these firms um, that that you would expect. And I think for me, that's really um, uh, the reason the core root cause there is because um, the teams are not set up for success. It's not, you cannot build up a massive security department and say, hey, we're going to have security because we've invested a huge amount into it. Invest a huge amount into security, but it needs to be built into the fabric of everything else. You need to be out there educating, um, teaching people. And it's funny because in the background, you can kind of see um, some of the notes I have. I actually have a couple notes up for uh, future uh, videos, like formal videos. And it's, um, you know, I lost my phone, now what? That was from a friend's experience. Um, and then uh, learn more about getting into cybersecurity because I've had some great response to the work I've done there. Um, and I think people are really interested, but the challenge I have in giving that kind of advice about getting into cybersecurity is I don't really believe you should be getting into the existing set of cybersecurity roles because I don't think they're effective. I think there's far better ways to do this to get closer to actually getting the job done. Um, and I hope we can get there. Um, that's probably going to be the majority of my appearances in security conferences this year and next year is talking about organizational design, talking about better ways to do it. Um, that and operational technologies, which kind of bridges to my next um, topic, um, which is, uh, uh, unfortunately, there was a fatality yesterday um, uh, from an Uber vehicle. Uh, it was in um, Arizona. Um, and Arizona has been quite at the forefront as far as allowing uh, self-driving cars and self-driving freight um, tests. Um, and it's unfortunate that there was a fatality yesterday. The details are still coming through, but apparently there was a human driver in the car, but the car was on autonomous mode, um, which uh, means there's going to be a ton of data to analyze and to figure out what went wrong. 
Um, driving in a city is an extremely difficult problem to tackle. Uh, there's so many, so many variables, but this comes back to a theme that I talked at South by, uh, about at South by Southwest, um, that I've talked about a few internal events for various companies around the world, um, is that when you're dealing with operational technologies, so essentially not inf IT, information technologies is, you know, what we're used to dealing with every day. We're typing up documents, we're making data, we're processing information. OT, operational technologies, is have a real world component. Um, healthcare devices, um, robots, autonomous vehicles, um, you know, it's the uh, heavy duty side of, I, I, of IoT. Um, so, you know, autonomous vehicles fall under OT and here uh, it's a very different um, scenario as far as um, what's going on um, or from a security perspective because, you, you know, there's zero risk tolerance. Um, whereas, you know, the example I give is if you're running a business online um, and you're sitting there and saying, okay, I've got, um, you know, I'm making $10,000 an hour or I'm making a million dollars a year on my website as a business. Um, I can afford to defend that uh, business up to a million plus or something like that, you know, to defend my reputation and things like that. But there's a very definitive line. Of, I'm not going to spend more on security than what the data at, or the income is worth, because why would you? Why would you spend $10 million to protect a million dollars? It doesn't seem to make any sense. You're losing a ton of money that way. When it comes to operational technologies, that risk equation completely changes. You're not willing to take that risk because now you've gone from saying I'm making money and I can, you know, there's a line in which is no longer profitable to I'm defending human life, right? Or I'm interacting with the real world and human life or environmental damage is at risk. Um, I'm not going to accept any of those, um, any damage there or any issues there, um, it's a zero risk tolerance. So now your security equation changes. You're far more willing to pay for extraordinary measures that you wouldn't be uh, to protect your website. And I think most people agree with that. Um, so when it comes to autonomous vehicles, like unfortunately the one that had a, a fatality the other day, uh, yesterday in Arizona, um, that's gonna be picked apart because it is a zero tolerance scenario. You are not going to um, allow vehicles, you're not gonna say, yeah, okay, I'll bug them. I'm cool with bugs because you know what? Bugs are only gonna kill one in a thousand people. No, it's one thing if you say, you know, one in a thousand systems are gonna have to reboot. And at the worst case scenario, you lose your browsing history or that draft of a document. Um, it's the same one in a thousand people are going to get hurt. It's a completely unacceptable um, metric. So it's a it's a shift um, in uh, the threat and risk analysis. Um, so I'm giving a couple talks upcoming that kind of bridges from what I talked uh, last week at South by Southwest. I've got a couple um, that I'm looking to schedule over the next few months um, on the security side. So going deeper than I did at South by Southwest, but also I'm looking to place that talk at a couple uh, more conferences around the same level as South by Southwest, so much higher view um, of the situation. Um, so that people are just aware of the challenges there because um, I think that's really important. So sort of double tackling uh, risk there, risk in the organizational design. Um, not sure where I'm going with this stuff today, uh, but lots on the, the plate to catch up from uh, from being away last week uh, and uh, not being on the ball uh, so much in the last couple of days because uh, I'm just recovering from that and uh, getting it back adjusted. So anyway, unfortunate um, that that uh, very unfortunate um, and tragic uh, with the death in Arizona um, and my heart goes out to that person and the family. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't even know what to say to that. It's, it's unfortunate. It's tragic. There's no other way to look around it. Um, thankfully, uh, all the testing has been paused. Um, so we'll see uh, what it is, but it is a wake up call, I think, for engineering. I think it's a wake up call for security to say, hey, there's real stakes here. And I think that's, it, that's a key takeaway for a lot of people in operational technologies that it's not like IT where you can, eh, we'll patch it, we'll fix it. You know, so what if that game doesn't work properly? We'll just patch it again. Um, you can't pick patch or fix um, real world damage. So hopefully there are um, real steps forward taken as a result of this tragedy, um, but we'll see. And uh, I, I wish I had a happier note um, to, uh, to to end this on. Um, I don't know where to go from there. Uh, Hopefully, you know, somebody's got a good cat video or something where we can uh, we can pass that around. Um, or I saw on Facebook the other day, a friend of mine had passed it along. Of, uh, it was just this absolutely adorable puppy going, you know, exercise is good for you. And he just had his paw on the uh, on the treadmill and just doing this was that was his exercise. And I think uh, that was something positive. Um, anyway, search around for some jokes, maybe find something to, to cheer you up. Didn't mean for this to go so sad, um, but I hope you have a good Tuesday and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.